Welcome to another deep dive. Today, uh, we're going to be, um, well, we're going to be looking at Warrior Woman by Marion Zimmer Bradley. Ah, Warrior Woman. Yeah. Yeah, that one always seems to uh, cause a bit of a stir, even with Bradley's, uh, you know, her hardcore fans. Right. We've got a pretty interesting collection of uh, stuff to go through today. Yeah. Reviews and uh, biographical info, even some... Uh, some stuff from online discussions about it. Yeah, it's a real myth, and I think it's necessary because, you know, for so many people, Marion Zimmer Bradley equals mists of Avalon. Right. These, like, beautifully written, you know, retellings of Arthurian legends, but from the perspective of the women. Yes. Really just, like, rich and complex and powerful. Absolutely. So then you get Warrior Woman, and people are comparing it to, like, yeah. John Darma's gore novels, and it's like, whoa, wait, what? It's a bit of whiplash. Yeah, total whiplash. For those who haven't had the uh, pleasure of encountering the Gore novels, right. it's a blend of sci-fi and fantasy, really popular in the 70s and 80s, but uh, known for a very particular view on gender roles that has not aged well. Definitely not known for being, uh, how do we say this? Yeah. Kind to their female characters. Yeah, to put it mildly. To put it mildly. But here's where it gets really juicy. Okay. The source material we have hints that Warrior Woman was actually a result of a bet. Really? A challenge issued to Bradley by her editor who was publishing gore novels. Oh, wow. It's like he dared her to write back. Interesting. To write a response to the way that women were being portrayed. Wow. In that very particular style of fantasy. That's a great story behind it already. I mean, just that right there. I know. You've got Marion Zimmer Bradley, who made her name, writing these really intricate female-centric stories. And she's suddenly writing something even remotely in that style. It's like finding out a gourmet chef also slings burgers on the weekend. Right, exactly. <laughs> like what? It's kind of a head scratcher at first. Yeah, and just to add another layer here, okay. it's categorized as fantasy warrior woman, but a lot of reviewers comment on how surprisingly straightforward it is, almost like young adult in style in the language and the themes. Yeah, that's something that comes up a lot in the reviews. Yeah. A lot of people saying that it felt simpler than her other work. Mm -hmm. You know, especially compared to something like the Dark Over books, which are so intricate. So we've got this like almost scandalous beginning. We've got uh -huh. a dash of controversy with the whole gore novel connection. And then a surprisingly accessible writing style. Yeah. I am ready to dive in. How about you? Let's do it. So paint us a picture here. Who is this warrior woman at the heart of it all? So we're introduced to Zadia, or that's what she ends up going by, because we meet her as this amnesiac wandering the desert. Okay. No memory of who she is or where she came from or anything like that. Amnesia, the classic plot device. A oh. little bit on the nose, but hey, I'm here for it. <laughs> you know, it makes you want to uncover all those mysteries. And, you know, Bradley's not going to leave it at just that. Right. This is the woman who gave us powerful mages and yeah. mists of Avalon and these crazy societies on another planet. So, of course, Idea's amnesia is just the very beginning. To fill us in, what happens? She gets captured, obviously, and sold into slavery. But here's where those classic MZB themes that we love come in. When faced with the traditional past laid out for a woman in this situation, which is essentially, you know, becoming some kind of concubine. Right. Zadia's like, no, thank you. Yeah. She's like, I'd rather be a gladiator. Wow. Which is like. Talk about taking charge. Yeah. And you said that this world kind of had some similarities or at least shared some DNA with the Gore novels. And I'm guessing Gladiator wasn't really a typical career path for women in those books. Yeah, you're not going to find too many lady gladiators in those pages. Right. So it's this really interesting, like, counterpoint that Bradley's making here. Okay. She's taking that trope and totally subverting it. It's really interesting to think about, too, because... You know, in a lot of ways, like the 70s and the 80s, this was a time period where women were often, you know, kind of relegated to very specific roles in genre fiction. Yeah. And so to have her write a character like Zadia, who's thrust into this, like, brutal male-dominated arena, it really is a statement. It is. It's about agency, and it's about refusing to be put in a box. Like, she's taking those expectations of what a woman should be and just smashing them on the arena floor. Exactly. And it's not just about physical strength either. Like, there's a lot in the reviews about how Warrior Woman, even though it's this really harsh world, it still has those, like, really deep relationships that Bradley's known for, especially between women. Oh, interesting. Okay, so even in the mix of all that blood and sand, there's still space for, like, emotional depth and connection. Absolutely. And... There's this one relationship in particular that a lot of the reviewers picked up on. It's between Zadia and another female gladiator named Bezon. Okay. 
And they have this really strong bond that goes way beyond just, you know, being comrades in the arena. So we're talking about maybe something a little bit romantic. Yeah, there are definitely some hints there. Okay. And again, you can see how that's kind of a direct contrast to those gore novels we were talking about before, which mm-hmm. were not exactly known for their nuanced portrayal of same-sex relationships. Yeah. So it's almost like Bradley took this world that's built on certain power dynamics and certain assumptions and carved out this space for something different, something that felt a lot more real. So much more complex. Yes, exactly. And even with those really cool elements, yeah, the reviews are still kind of mixed. You know? Yeah, you mentioned before that even hardcore MZB fans seem to have a kind of complicated relationship with this book. Right. Why is that what didn't quite work? Yeah, it's like we talk about books that miss the mark, but yeah. like there's always a reason why. Absolutely. And sometimes I think those misses are even more interesting to kind of unpack than the masterpieces. So let's unpack what are some of the factors that might explain the mixed reaction to Warrior Woman? Well, one thing that comes up in the source material is Marion Zimmer Bradley's personal life. Right. Which was, to put it mildly, complicated. Yeah, and this is always a little bit tricky. We want to be respectful, but also, you know, we're trying to understand the work, and especially with a book like this where she's challenging norms, it feels relevant. Absolutely. And it's something that I think people have been grappling with for a really long time, right? Like, How do you separate the art from the artist, Mm -hmm. especially when there are elements of their personal lives that are troubling? And without, you know, getting into the nitty gritty, it sounds like Bradley's life definitely had some shadows. Right. And there's some speculation, you know, among scholars and reviewers that Warrior Woman, because it was published relatively early in her career, maybe wasn't as much of a passion project as something like The Mists of Avalon, which she spent years researching. So you're saying that whole bet with the editor story. Yeah. It wasn't just a fun anecdote. Maybe not entirely. Maybe it was more of a case of you know, fulfilling a contract or something like that. So it's like she took the challenge. She kind of flipped the script on the gore novels, but maybe her whole heart wasn't in it. Yeah, maybe not. And that kind of leads into another thing that the source material mentions about Warrior Woman is the ending. Okay. A lot of people found it really abrupt and kind of unsatisfying. Really? Yeah, but it's that abruptness that is so interesting because it leaves you with all of these unanswered questions. So a classic MZB cliffhanger. Totally. And in the last couple of pages, this character from Zadia's past just reappears out of nowhere. Oh, wow. And she's left with this, like, giant question mark. And we are, too, as readers. Did she ever hint at a sequel? Is this something that she wanted to explore further? It doesn't seem like it. From everything that we have, it seems like if there were plans for a follow-up, it never happened. Which, I guess, if the reception to Warrior Woman was mixed, maybe that's not surprising. Yeah, and it's like we get this little fragment. A little taste. Yeah, a little taste of what could have been. Yeah. And I think that's what makes Warrior Woman such a fascinating book to talk about. You know, it's flawed, yes. But those flaws are actually really interesting because they tell us something about being an author, about those pressures and compromises. Yeah. It's a good reminder that even like literary giants, you know, they're not immune to market forces or, you know, writer's block or just sometimes a story not quite coming together the way that you hoped it would. Totally. And I think that's the beauty of a deep dive like Mm -hmm. this. We get to talk about not just the book, but like the whole context around it. You know, Bradley's life, the conversations that were happening around this book when it came out and even the questions that it still makes us ask. Yeah. And who knows, maybe this will inspire some listeners to go and check out her other work and find those books that really resonated with readers. Exactly. There are so many other facets to Marion Zimmer Bradley's writing and so much to explore. This has been fascinating. I always love a good deep dive. Me too. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening.